Zoid's Battle Legend. Looking good, YouTube. My name is Love Game, or PD1 Piranha if you prefer. And welcome back for more. After three years, how about some more Zoids? That's right. We're gonna be doing Zoids Battle Legend as that lovely voice actor just uh, enunciated for us. Uh, this game has two main single player modes, the story itself, as well as the uh, Zoid Battle, which is a tournament mode essentially. I'm going to be doing both for the channel because this game is not that long, and why the hell not, right? You can show off the different uh, ins and outs of the game. This game has a lot of similarities and a lot of differences from Legacy, which I played three years ago, if you can believe that. <laughs> All those Novembers ago. <laughs> Y'all can read this if you want, I'm not going to voice act it because it has no voice acting, even though the game has voice acting, the quote-unquote cutscenes don't. But the similarities being that this stars a lot of the same characters from Zoid's Legacy, like the Raw Tiger and Blue Unicorn teams. Blue Unicorn in this case, because I'm playing the Republican side. However, this guy is new. He's like the new recruit to the Blue Unicorn team, so he was not in Legacy. And this guy is the new recruit for, well, Raw Tiger. Pretty easy to figure that much out. But it is also similar in the fact that it is a second game. It is a sequel to a Japan-only game. Matter of fact, in Japan, this game was called Zoids vs. 2. Zoids vs. 1, as well as Zoids vs. 3, were only in Japan. Uh, the games aren't too dissimilar, they're all for the GameCube, if that tells you anything. They are not... Again, too dissimilar in that regard, but this game is different in the fact that it is not in any way an RPG. This game is instead... You know what? I like that color. Mark II. More of a, I guess you could call it a third-person shooter, if anything. A third-person mech shooter. Because this time around we are controlling the Zoids in real time. And it's a bit on the janky side, I won't lie. I'm not gonna act like this game is perfect in any means. It's, it's a licensed Hasbro and Tomy game from the mid-2000s on the GameCube, so... I'm not going to expect any miracles. You have your basic shoot, which is your A button. You've got melee, which is your B button. You have a special attack you can do. It's kind of awkward to actually properly pull off. Because you have to have, like, your meter filled up, which you have to have low health to do in the first place. And then you also have, like, an auxiliary thing. In this case, an E-shield. That you can use with the Z button. Uh, you jump with a C stick of all things. You do a side jump with a C stick. You do B is your standard like jump jump, which you can use to gain speed. The controls aren't too bad. They're actually quite fast and loose for a mech game. You'd think they'd be a lot clunkier, but the thing in this mode is like early on you don't have a lot of options. You're just kind of going with the bare bones basics, whatever the hell the game has given you, so I literally just have a command wolf with the basic weapons on it. I have no... Normally you can change weapons with the, uh... I think it's the Y button to change weapons, but there's nothing to change to right now, so I'm kind of just using what I have. What up? But... It's a decent looking game. I mean, the, the maps are kind of generic, especially this one, but... The Zoid models are pretty true to what the toys in the uh, TV show look like, so... Um, funny enough, I have this the Zoid that I'm fighting right now, not the one that I'm piloting. Uh, the Attack Cat Noir, aka Hellcat Noir, which is weird because the even the English dub of the anime calls it a Hellcat, but I guess Hell is just too hardcore for this game for some reason. Because, like, the Hasbro name of the Zoid was Attack Cat. Like, I still have a box somewhere that even says that on it. But, even in the English dub of the show, they call it Hellcat. As you can see, the first mission isn't too bad. It's just kind of a basic one-on-one -on -one little, almost a tutorial in that sense. But, 
These guys will be kind of our main characters, main rivals for the bulk of the game. Mr. Shoma Cheval and... I think it's Koki, not Kuki, because number one, that would sound stupid. Number two, the OU sound in Japanese is... See, it says Mysterious Man, but you can see his fucking name, so I'm not spoiling anything. But... Thankfully, the translation in this game isn't... Well, I say thankfully. The translation in this game... <laughs> what in the heck? What is this? What the heck? He's jumps. And then he jumps again from a different angle. But... Each mission here will have, like, different objectives. Obviously, it's not always just kill so-and-so Zoids. But the problem with this, like, early on is we don't have any options hardly at all to, like, be versatile with. Uh, the subparts are all just going to be, like, passive abilities that don't actually, like, you can't control them. They're just little things like defensive boosts. Uh, option here, as you can see, is just, like, your, your Z button. Whatever the hell your little auxiliary non-weapon part is. But, nothing else to do but start. Thankfully we have the Weapon Binder, which is like the most broken weapon in the entire game in my opinion. With the one caveat that you have to be quite far- I'm trained, I can do it! But yeah, the Weapon Binders are pretty good because, like, they shoot guns and missiles at the same time. With the one caveat being you have to be kind of far away for them to be effective, so definitely judge your distance when you're using these, like... As long as you can actually lock on, you should be doing okay. Like, notice how the map kind of changed there because I was... close to the opponent rather than being so far away that it would zoom out to the point that... it would have to accommodate for that, I guess? It's kind of odd that it does that. I think that's because I have that radar attachment equipped, which I don't normally use. But the Sea Strikers aren't too much of a threat. Obviously the Zaber Fang can just fuck you up in one hit if it wants to because of the melee attacks being, like, a lot better when they use them than they are whenever you use them. Kind of a running theme here, but you get the point. Like, at this point, just use the regular guns. You're that close, like, why not? I'm gonna hit it. I'm sure you are, Shoma. I can't wait to get the other characters in this game, too, because they have a lot of beautifully fun uh, lines they can speak. Go ahead and switch here again. Yeah, the boosters are generally more useful, even though the E-Shield can stun, just for the sheer fact that well, you can get around faster and get away from stuff faster, too, if you need to. I'm getting it. Ah! Yeah, the voice acting in this game was definitely done on the budget. I mean, I'm not gonna... What this game lacks in bad translation, it makes up for in very 2000s voice acting. So... You can have all your fun with that that you'll want to. I did not actually have this game as a kid. As a matter of fact, I didn't play this game until like 2016 when I was um, messing around with a homebrew channel on my Wii, by which I mean playing the game on a totally legal, legitimate GameCube system by Nintendo. Actually, I hooked up an Xbox controller too because I know how to do that. Don't ask me that in the comments, I'm not going to tell you. That's classified. Yeah, I believe these two Zoids were actually, like, kind of tie-ins for this game. Like, I believe they were even... At least as toys alongside the game. But yeah, that Attack Cat or Hellcat in War, funny enough, was a pre-order bonus for the game in Japan. How do I have it, you might ask? Well, I have a I have a hookup. I know this guy named Gojulus Omega. Shoutouts to him. 
And that good fella was able to send me the Zoid for about 20 bucks, actually, I think. Not too, not too bad at all. It is a beautiful little model kit. It's like black and green. It even has the Raw Tiger colors and stuff on it. I like it a lot. But yeah, this is uh, more of an escort mission here. All you really have to do, in particular, is like get the thing to the end. And by thing, you'll see what I mean in a moment. I just haven't gotten to that yet. I'll keep the booster. Instead of the search radar, give me that armor. This one can be a little bit tough because... You have a certain Zoid that just loves to go all in on you and can divide its attention quite well thanks to its weapons. Okay, let's go. I'm not a big fan of where I spawn either, but it's right by the hover cargo. That's what I mean by thing, which I said earlier. But yeah, um, these guys aren't your main threats necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the jump with the C stick is actually quite useful. It's more so that yeah. it makes a very annoying sound every time you use it, it, depending on who you're actually playing as. <laughs> also, you see what I mean now by that thing is way too close for it to be effective. It's good against the bosses, for what that's worth. They haven't fought a boss yet. But when we do, you'll see what I mean. Alright. Hopefully I don't accidentally hit the hover cargo trying to navigate. Oh yeah, these Molgas are the real bitch of this fight, because they can do so much damage. Which is funny to think about, because the Molgas are like even more basic bitch soldier toys than the Sea Striker is. And for some reason they hit like trucks. I mean, I don't know, I guess they're because they have missiles. And you see how good missiles are in this game, so it's not that much of a surprise, it's just like, come the fuck on, it's a Molga. Not a Molga, the Pokemon, it's a singular Molga. Yeah, these guys, again, don't do too much damage, just kind of pick them off like that. But our main goal here is to get this thing to the end of the map. And if it has a lot of health left, you can just kind of let it... You can just kind of run the fuck away and let it uh, take hits. I'm a little bit cheap that way, but... You know, I am quite cheap like that, as uh, our favorite electrical beast once said. But yeah, lore-wise... I think this game is supposed to take place, like, after Legacy, although... I don't know, Zoid's canon is really fucking weird. Because... The games with Raw Tiger and Blue Unicorn are like semi canon, but also take place in like a potentially AU. Which is kind of like interesting to think about that it was this. It was an ambitious thing at the time to make a big crossover game for a franchise that like hadn't really established its timeline consistently enough to do that convincingly. Say Tisk. Alright, no. Target the fucking ball guy. As you can see, even the missiles are a little bit tricky to dodge. Like, even when you're yeah. really trying. Generally, you want to dodge towards them, but even that's not the most reliable strat in the world. It'll get easier once we get more Zoids and more parts, but for the time being, we're kind of working with whatever the hell we have. Which isn't much. We're almost done here, it's looking like. Yeah, this was like, even, even the Zaber things weren't as bad as this. It just is Again, the Molgas can really shred you, just one of them can do like half of your health and it feels like it. Thankfully we're so close to being done that it doesn't matter. I'll just 
get those epic points that don't matter towards anything, so this is a tournament mode. You actually get graded in tournament mode for how well you do, so you want to rack up more damage Mission and whatnot. Accomplished. And sometimes your partner can steal the kills, which is kind of annoying, but we haven't seen the AI in this game yet on our side, so I'll save that for when it's relevant. Yeah, I hope all my, uh, all my boys down at, well, from the Zoids group are doing okay. I know a lot of them don't talk to me anymore. Like, I haven't heard from Daraj in, like, three years now. I don't know what happened to him. Every now and then I still talk to Falcarius. I know he's doing good. The old Zoids history, and I'm kind of like the bootleg Falcarius. I know a lot about Zoids history, but not, like, to the degree that he does, because he's the master. So I'm not sure, like, I know this, it, like, affects certain things, but I'm going to pick A the entire time, just because it's not a big deal. As you can see, we have the return of all the Raw Tiger and Blue Unicorn characters, which means, if you guys know me, and you know my, uh, well, especially my YouTube banner, and... All the gushing I did back in Zoid's Legacy. You probably know what's coming up, but I'll save that for when it happens. I didn't mention that whatsoever back in the Legacy LP, but now that it's already happened, I figure... Why not? Because you all know how I be. One kind of annoying thing is you have to take off the weapons of one Zoid to put them on another one. It can get a little bit annoying, but... What are you gonna do? So this puts up your searching ability, but... Oh. Does this make you have a bigger map? I'm not sure I follow. You know what? Rotational ability, though, is pretty good for a sniper. A snipe master, in this case. Let's see, I'll take the good old edgy black and red, why not? Now, switching your zoids and all that can be kind of annoying. Because of all this menu navigation you have to do, but you know what? It looks nice. All right. We playing as Tita Breeze instead of our... Our boy Shoma, because you know what? Snipe Master is kind of her Zoid anyway. I'll do my best. You're relaxed. This is like very heavily reliant on whether whether or not the AI wants to cooperate with you or not. Get it! I mean, that guy just drops like a fucking fly if he wants to. Why is my camera so crazy? There we go. Reset. Condemnation. Yep. So I was like, yeah, no, even the missiles aren't not gonna kill a fucking Saber Fang that quick. That's... Not happening. Yeah, I think the, the Snipe Master is like a Zoid that was made to more or less replace and or outclass the Gun Sniper. I kind of like the Gun Sniper better though. I tend to like Zoids that have more of a, to use the Gundam term here, mono-eye, rather than having like the two-eye cockpit. I don't know why I like that design better, I just, generally speaking, I aesthetically that pleases me more. Get out of the fucking way, Rainer. It's not better than this in Halo. Hint, hint, since we're doing that game next. Get out of here! There we go. Condemnation! I got it! I'm sure you do, Rainer. I'm sure you do. Oh. I got it! Darn! 
gotta get it if it's good, am I right? There we go. When the AI wants to cooperate, that's really fucking easy to make. I had that first fucking try on my practice run, and then all Rainer has to just happily jump off into that uh, Grand Canyon over there, doing some sightseeing, I know. I'm sure if that was Van, you would have survived, because Van could survive fucking any drop in the world, because there's a plank at the bottom waiting to spring him right off. Unfortunately, you won't see my epic reaction, because I... This is a second run, or a second recording. But, I was like... Surprised as fuck at this mission because I'll show you why. Go ahead and remove all of that. Let's remove again. No. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, this objective is a little bit different because. You're not meant to fight, you're meant to run the fuck away. So we'll go ahead and to that end. Get our booster on there. Some extra armor. Mobility, of course, why not? I'll go ahead and swag this thing out too. Let's get purple, there we go. Yeah, the customization in this is pretty cool. You, like, unlock a lot of stuff later on that can be used to give you some delicious arrays of Taking weapons off. and what have you, but look at this spawn. Look at how ridiculously cheap this spawn right here is. A free hit, no matter what I did there, so... You would be forgiven for thinking you might be, like, instantly dead the minute you started that, because of the fact that melee attacks, when the enemy uses them, do about twice the fucking damage they would if you used them, so... It's kinda just you against the world here, including these fucking turrets, but... I don't know why they're appearing to attack each other, but I won't question it. Thankfully, jumping and boosting will also give you a bit of an edge, but... Having the Shadow Fox for this mission is obviously what you're supposed to do. I'm sure there's some kind of pro strat Valkyrius knows about these laughing at me for not using right now. I say right now twice, but I think. But there's the end of that mission. Yeah, I was like really surprised when I saw this. There's another mission later on that makes you go even further than that. In a similar map or the same map, maybe? I don't know. That was like a nighttime map, though. But, that was fairly simple. I think we'll do one more and call it a part. This mission, if I'm remembering right, yeah, this one's a tough one. Okay. So I tried a lot of different strats for this. Um, it requires a pretty big think. And by that I mean it requires you to not get hit, ever. I hate this mission so fucking much. Alright. So this mission pits you against two extremely tanky lightning slikes, which are also very fast. The best idea is to go for it before you even think about fucking with the sea strikers here. Luckily you have a shield lager on your side, and I do love me the shield, what the fuck. Don't target that, thank you. Okay. Look at how much that does to me compared to him. Like, I'm already 
ridiculously disadvantaged. No, not that. If I didn't have a Zan, I would probably be already more or less dead because. Yes. Well, you get the point. Yes. Yeah, I'm already dead. No, he didn't do the follow up for some reason. But you saw how much I lost off of that single little like baby tap that he did there. The enemy's melee attacks are about twice as effective as yours, like, that's being generous. I'm already stunned, so I might be down from the count. Because, like, these guys are ridiculously tanky compared to what you would think a lightning yeah, undead. I'm not sure how I did this on my, like, old run from back in the day. This wasn't, like, as hard as some of the later missions, but I'm trying to conserve some ammo here just because I know I'm going to be needing it bad. Oh, well, his AI kind of fucked up there, so I got a couple of lucky bits there. But yeah, you are, like, severely outclassed for this entire little... Skirmish here, scuffle, however you want to call it. I don't know what these do, it's like a fucking... Oh, it's a... T is is that the tail cannon? Is that what that is? No, not yet. Get blown away. Yeah, no, you would think that the... The Shadow Fox would, like, outclass the Lightning Sykes in that regard, but it, it doesn't. It certainly fucking doesn't. To the point that, as you can see, I'm like, I'm at half health and I've barely taken down one lightning sights. I have a skin of my fucking teeth, and the next one's gonna spawn behind me again, watch. Wait, what? Huh? Am I hallucinating here? I thought I, just, I, I only killed one lightning sights. Unless fucking Zan killed one, in which case, holy shit. Why didn't I use you more in Legacy? Who was my team in Legacy? I had, obviously, me. I had, well, I had Bit until he had to leave. I had Van. I had Lena. Thomas. I had Rainer. Oh, um, Albane. Albane, every you fucking Oh, yeah. So this is a funny, like, translation thing right here. Senior pilot, if you couldn't tell, it's supposed to be Senpai. I'm not kidding. Like, I guess you could make that into a portmanteau and call it senpai, but kind of a funny way of saying it, I suppose. Falcarius made like a full translation of this game that has more accurate subtitles to what they would actually say, so... I forget what word he used, but like, I guess you could say master or something. I don't know. Review that later on. These guys like shouting a lot, I can tell, though. But either way, after that annoying mission, we're gonna call that apart, so... I'm hoping y'all enjoyed the... new LP, as it begins, of Zoid's Battle Legends. Different kind of game, for sure, but... a welcome change, to be sure. But until then... I want you all to have a lovely and safe night, and uh...